Hey, it's Justin Kanoya, DJ, business coach, and idea sharer. And in this video, I'm taking you on a tour of my wedding ceremony sound system. Now, this tour is related to the video I did where I walked you through the entire build process of the system. And if you haven't watched that, it's linked below and it's probably linked somewhere up here, so be sure to check that out. But in watching that, I realized that the video was so focused on the build that I didn't really get into the specifics on the gear and how I use this setup. So that's exactly what I'm here to do today. So let's take a look. Now, starting with the case, this is a 4U Studio Rack Flyer from SKB. The 4U, of course, means it has four rack spaces. And this is on both sides of the case. So you could technically rack eight pieces of gear that only take up one space. But I'm not really sure what scenario that would actually work, so I really wouldn't advise on that. But despite all that, I still filled it pretty considerably with two microphone receivers, a 2U drawer, and an input-output panel. And yes, I still had one space available, but there really wasn't anything that would fit there, so I just covered it with this vented cover. Despite it being made of the molded plastic, the case is durable enough for me and the type of work that I use it for. The covers also have a rubber gasket that creates a watertight seal, keeping gear dry. Although I still wouldn't recommend leaving it out in the rain. And probably the coolest feature is this pull-out handle so you can roll it in and out to wherever you need to go. And one more thing to note, it's got handles on both sides, which makes maneuvering it super easy for one or two people. Moving on to the mixer. After using a few different Behringer models over the past couple of decades, I moved on to this Allen & Heath mixer, the ZI-10FX. I honestly think this aligns three very important qualities I always look for in mixers. Quality audio, a vast array of features, and budget friendliness. From an audio quality perspective, it just sounds great. And I realize that is very subjective, but I really think it sounds good. The mic preamps seem to be optimized just right, and I don't feel like there's an overabundance of noise coming from the outputs. And speaking of outputs, XLR master outputs. The quarter inch master outs on the entry level Behringer models as well as inexpensive DJ controllers just drive me nuts. The ZI-10FX has these top facing XLR mains and I just love it. You want more features? How about the three band EQ on all of the XLR channels? Each of which have line level quarter inch inputs for keyboards, guitars, and other instruments. There is a library of FX, hence 10FX, that you can apply to nearly every channel. You can also control the amount of effects you're sending to those channels. I love that this mixer has an LED meter, providing a visual way to gain structure of the input channels without having to send a signal to the main outputs. And each one of these channels can also be heard through the headphone output, pre-fade. That means with the channel knob or main mix fader completely muted. But the best feature of all, a dedicated aux out. This is probably why, in my opinion, there isn't a better mixer under $400, especially to use at wedding ceremonies. The aux out gives anyone, usually a videographer, the ability to connect to the board and receive direct audio. Not only is the signal for the audio independent from the master mix, but you can also control the amount of signal going to the aux. And lastly, something I didn't think I would need, but because of this USB port, the mixer also acts as a USB audio interface to a connected computer. So if you need a quality interface with multiple inputs and outputs for a Twitch stream or a Zoom meeting, all you need to do is connect this to your computer, find and select it within the application, and you are ready to go. This was an absolute lifesaver for all those virtual parties and Zoom streams in 2020. Now let's take a look at the microphones. I've had a few questions on why I have two different microphone systems. Well, there are a few reasons. I'd say the primary one is that I wanted to add a proven quality wireless lapel microphone system. And for me, it was the Audio-Technica 3000 series. I've always enjoyed this series. In fact, before moving over to the System 10 Pro, I used the third generation 3000 series for many years. Now I mentioned quality. So it's not a knock on the System 10 Pro. I've had no issues with this in the few years that I've been using it. 
but I just thought having a UHF frequency system in addition to the 2.4 gigahertz based System 10 Pro was a natural redundancy and backup. The second reason for the additional system is that it gives me a third wireless option. Since this is mostly used for ceremonies, at minimum, I want to have a lapel mic for the officiant and a handheld for any readings that take place. And of course, to also use as backup if the lapel starts acting up and dropping out. But it's also provided flexibility because depending on my needs, I have options to utilize two handhelds and one lapel, a single handheld and two lapels, or three handhelds. Now let's talk about music source. For ceremony music, I transfer the needed songs to this mini iPad via Apple Music. I use the DJ app from Algorithm and it works out great. The only thing I'm still trying to figure out is a permanent solution for mounting this. If I'm using this on a table, I can just place the iPad on the table, but that's not really ideal. So I'm looking for some kind of a laptop or tablet stand that I can clamp somewhere, somewhere on here. If you've got any recommendations, please let me know down in the comments below because I'm desperate to find something. All right, one of my favorite parts of this case is this drawer. I've used this for several years in various setups. The drawer insert was originally designed to hold 10 handheld microphones, but I kind of cut it up so I could add wireless handhelds as well as some compartments for some other stuff. So you can see I've got my lav packs right here. I've got my mics. And by the way, this is just a, a recycled case. I think there was like, I don't even remember what came in this, but it fits two microphones really nicely in it. I also have my quarter wave antennas in here, as well as some pens and the Cat5 cable when I need to mount my antennas remotely. And finishing off this case is of course the custom panel. Now I've talked at length about how I built this panel in the previous case build video, so be sure to check that out for more on all of that. But this panel really just does wonders for cleaning up the setup and just reducing the wear and tear on the component connections. For this particular setup, I have XLR master outputs, BNC connectors to mount the antennas, and of course the Cat5 ports to use when remotely mounting the System 10 antenna packs. Whether mounted in a 19 inch rack space or via a wall panel, I highly recommend adding these to any road case. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of this case. The obvious pros is that everything I need to run a ceremony besides the speaker is contained right in here. My past ceremony systems have been housed in a 3U rack, which was just a bit too small. And I even had this rolling rack, which was a little bit too big. But this 4U SKB case is just right. It's intersecting portability with productivity. Now, when it comes to cons, I think the only con is just a product of the fact that it does have everything. And when everything is contained in one case, it's gonna start to get pretty heavy. So that is gonna be the one drawback I would say of it. It's a bit heavy. I'm able to lift it on my own, but still it's not the easiest lift. Well, there you have it. A quick tour of my wedding ceremony sound system. What do you think? And what questions do you have? Let me know down in the comments below. And finally, if you are embarking on a project like this and need a little advice, I'm offering consultations to chat with you and help navigate through the options. So if you're interested in learning more, reach out to me by clicking on the link below or send me a message on Instagram. That'll do it for this one. Hit like if you found something helpful with this video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more DJ related content just like this. Thank you for watching. I'm DJ Justin Kanoya and I'll see you next time online.